This series of videos is going to show you how to do Lewis structures for covalent compounds. I broke it down into four small videos instead of one long one so that that way you could go back and rewatch just the specific examples that you wanted to see. So this one is just a little bit of background. First, I want to show you the difference between a Lewis structure of an ionic compound and one of a covalent compound. So copper Roman numeral two chloride, that's going to be an ionic compound where the copper Roman numeral two means that this copper lost two electrons, became plus two. Well, chloride ions are negative one. So the formula for this would be CuCl2. A Lewis structure is going to show all those atoms and all the electrons that took part in making that bond. So I'm going to write the Cu in the middle, and it has a plus 2 charge, and it's not going to have any electron dots on it because it lost all of its valence electrons by transferring them over to the chlorides. And then chlorine has 7 valence electrons, but since this one's chloride, it's in an ionic compound, it has gained an extra electron. That means I have to put it into brackets and put a little negative 1 outside of it to show this has extra electrons than it normally has, and it's not neutral anymore. But that only shows one of the chlorides from my formula, so on the other side, I would put the other chloride. So there's the seven valence electrons it normally has. It gained one more, so I put brackets all around it and a negative one charge. That would be a Lewis structure of an ionic compound. Covalent compounds are very different. They're going to be nothing but nonmetals, except for sometimes some metalloids. Um, there's also one other exception where you'll see beryllium. And then instead of seeing charges in brackets, you may see those occasionally, but mostly what you're gonna see are lines that represent bonds between those two atoms, and you'll still see the pairs of electrons. So a covalent compound can have a single bond, a double bond with two lines, or a triple bond that has three, uh, three lines. So on the piece of paper that I gave you, it has some information and exceptions that you're gonna need before you start making Lewis structures. Uh, the first thing is that most elements that you're going to deal with need an octet. Octet means that it needs eight valence electrons, and in Lewis structures, we break all the electrons into pairs. That means most elements are going to want four pairs of electrons, but there are exceptions. Some can have more and some can have fewer. The elements that can have fewer than an octet are boron, beryllium, and hydrogen. Boron can only have three pairs of electrons, and so that means six total electrons. Beryllium can only have two pairs, meaning a total of four electrons, and then hydrogen can only have one pair, so that means two electrons for that one. Then there are some elements that can have what we call expanded octets, and that means it can have more than eight electrons, more than four pairs. Elements that are in the third period on the periodic table and higher can have those expanded octets. The reason why is because that third period represents the third energy level, and the third energy level has D sublevel on it. And they, even though they're not using those D orbitals, they can put electrons into those D sublevels, and that's why we say they can expand their octet. The last thing you need to know is that there are some elements that can make double bonds or even sometimes triple bonds, but not all elements can do that. The only elements, let me get my highlighter tool out, that can make double or triple bonds are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And so there's a mnemonic device to help you remember that. It's CNOPS, pronounce it C-NOPS. CNOPS are the only elements that can make double or triple bonds. So if you look in this picture that I got from the UCLA website, the triple bond is shown between two carbons, carbons and CNOPS. The double bond also shown between two carbon, carbons and CNOPS. So you have this list of information at the top of your paper, and this is sort of background to get you ready for doing your first Lewis structure.